Good morning. Hi, Dr. Melody here with Fit Plus Faith. Welcome to day two. We have started a new series here on our Fit Plus Faith Facebook page going through our new Rooted in Christ devotional and journal that we released uh, in February of this year. Good morning. And so, man, so today is day two and what we're doing is every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll be going through this. And this is 72 days of different identities in Christ that you have, that you get to step into, to lean into, and to take on as your own because that is what Jesus has given you. And so oftentimes we just, we don't know what they are, we don't know what it is, and we're just not living in the full power and authority that we have in Christ. And so this is gonna help us do it. So welcome to day two. Normally we're gonna be going live at 8.30 in the morning, Pacific time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, just a few minutes early this morning though, because uh, I'm gonna head to a Pilates class after this and I don't wanna be late. So, all right, guess what? You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. Immediately I think of that Mandisa song, right? I'm an overcomer. If you need a song to like pump you up <laughs> and make you feel like on fire, like, yes, that is me, that is me. I need that, then go get that Mandisa song and just blast that and it's just so beautiful. But that is truly what God's word says about you and so we're gonna dive into that this morning. So if you have your journal and devotion, then head to day two and you'll see that our reading today is Revelation 12 verses 10 through 12. Revelation 12 verses 10 through 12. You can turn there with me if you have your Bible handy. I'm gonna read a few verses before that though so you kinda of get the big picture of what is happening. And this is talking about right now, before we even read that, I want you to declare out loud. I, insert your name, Melody, am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Say that with me right now and type it in the comments. I, Melody, put your name in there, am an overcomer by the word Sorry, by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb, by Jesus' blood and the word of my testimony. I use my testimony, my story, what God has done in my life to allow others to hear that so they can see the transformation of what God has done for me. I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Amen. So type that below. Great to see you, ladies. Yes, ma'am, Alex, so good. So let's go ahead and dive in to Revelation chapter 12. Our Devo has us reading verses 10 through 12, but I'm gonna skip a few verses up first to verse seven. And this is happening when John is seeing everything that is happening in heaven. He's seeing the war, the final war that is taking place literally between good and evil, between Jesus and uh, the, God's angel armies and between the devil and his armies. And so this amazing battle is happening and that's where we step into this. Yes, ladies. Beautiful. When you're typing it out, make sure you are speaking it out loud as well. And Christy, it is also by the word of your testimony as well. So you want both of those things, the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. All right, so here we are. Revelation 12, verse seven. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought back but he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven. Amen. The great dragon was hurled down that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. And he was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ for the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before God day and night has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has gone down to you. We know that in this world, this is still where the enemy is having his, his play. It's where he is having his effects right now. 
<laughs> but this is not the end. <laughs> this is not the end. And we need to remember now more than ever, I truly feel we need to remember now more than ever that the things that are going on, the things that are seen and that are unseen, that are happening in our world right now, it is not the end. It is not the end. So when things get really heavy, when things get really intense, when you see people dying, right, from this COVID virus right now, when you see people losing their jobs and losing their businesses and, and all these difficult, difficult things are happening and then unexpected tragedies happen and we see all this racial tension and we see all this upheaval in politics, right? There's so much going on right now. Our world is like in this crazy spin. But we have to remember, we are not residents of this world. We are only temporary residents, temporary residents. We need to fix our eyes on Christ, fix our eyes on Jesus, knowing that he already fully defeated the enemy and we are to live in that victory here and now. So does that mean we don't feel the things that are happening? Does that mean that it doesn't affect us? No, we don't turn a blind eye, but it means that we must remember that these things are temporary. This life is temporary. We were meant to live in the victory of who we are in Christ, knowing that yes, the enemy is having his play right now, but that's not the final say. That's not the final say. So we need to remember that and we need to dig in to God's word. That's, that's the reason why <laughs> I think God asked me to go through this devotional and to do it right now in these crazy times because we must remember, we must remember who is fully in charge and who is working in the ways that we cannot see. We cannot lose our faith. Now more than ever, our faith may be tested. So are you going to pass the test or are you going to lose your faith? We must remember that things are going on in the unseen and that ultimately, yes, Jesus is the victor. Jesus is the winner. <laughs> and we can claim that victory now. We can stop the enemy from having any more effect in our life now by declaring the truth and the power and the authority of Christ in our life. It doesn't mean that we don't feel the feelings, but it means that we don't stay there and we don't act from those feelings. We don't hurt other people with our words and with our actions. It means we continue to understand now more than ever, we must be the reflection and the hands and feet of Jesus in this hurting and lost world. This hurting and lost world, your neighbors, your mailman, the people at the store, the people on social media that are being so vicious. We are meant to be Jesus to them. So how would he respond? How would he act? He would still love them. And we must love them. We are called. We are called to love our neighbor as ourself. So what does that really look like? Man, that means we need to be acting and responding and speaking and thinking differently. The things of this world are temporary and they will pass away. But God is with us through these trials. He's with us through these trials. So we need to remember. We need to remember that we are to be plugged into him. Asking him to use us for his glory. Asking him to bring us peace that passes understanding. We need peace, don't we? Where do we get that peace? God is the only one that can give us that peace that we're seeking. God is the only one that can give that hurting friend and hurting neighbor the peace that they're seeking. So can we see people are acting out of pain and can we see what they truly need is the Lord? How can we help to facilitate that rather than be a more, more a part of a problem? We don't wanna be part of the problem, we wanna provide the solution. Provide the, provide the solution in love. And that's only going to come when you are in that peace and authority that Christ has given you to then act and respond to other people. It's not easy. It's not easy. But that's what we are called to do for our calling on this life until we're called home. And people need that more than ever, guys. Wow. Cynthia, oh, you had a whole page of notes from this one. That's awesome. I know this is such a good one. So if you do not yet have your own devotional and journal, Rooted in Christ, then you can get it at rootedinchristbook.com. Someone type that in the comments for me, please. Rootedinchristbook.com. 
That'll take you to the Amazon link where you can get this on your own. But what's beautiful about having this on your own, just like what Cynthia said, is there's a full page for journaling for each day. And then there's all these questions that we don't even have time to get to, but it's questions for you to begin going deeper and allowing God to meet you where you are, what you need to hear from him, where he wants you to grow. And so it's a really beautiful thing. So, wow, writing out your declaration and reflecting on your identity as an overcomer. How does that change your view and your perspective of the trials going on in your life, the trials going on all around us. How does you being an overcomer because of the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony, how does that affect other people when we're all going through the, these crazy trials right now? Other people will receive healing and peace by the word of your testimony. What is the word of your testimony in this? Awesome, thank you ladies, thanks for typing that in rootedinchristbook.com. That'll take you to the Amazon link. Wow. This is crazy to me, right? Because we wrote this back in December and it was published in February. And uh, so going through this right now, and it's like talking about what trials are you facing? And you know, what are the difficult? It's like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> the whole world is facing trials right now. <laughs> this is definitely applicable. Wow. What trials are you facing right now and need this truth and new perspective in your life? If you haven't yet typed it into the comments and spoken it out loud, follow along, repeat after me. I, insert your name, Melody, am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. May I not forget my testimony of what God has done in my life when I'm in these trials. When we're in these trials and we feel like God is far away or that God is left or that we don't understand or that there's so much hurt and pain, how could God allow this to be happening? When we have all these questions, we must remember he is the one true God who is completely unchanging. If he was there for you in the past, he will be there for you again. He is a God who is unchanging. That's what's so beautiful about him. Our world is tumultuous and our world is crazy. And even us ourselves, we are up and down and we change from day to day and we get swayed by our emotions. But God is unchanging. His love is steadfast. His peace is never ending. He is outside of time. This is but a blip in time for him. May we cling to him because he is with us on the other side of this. And yes, there will be the other side. He is unchanging. What is the word of your testimony? Remind yourself of it because oftentimes we have to remind ourselves because we can so easily forget. But when has God been there for you in the past? He will be there for you again. When was he working on things that you didn't see? He's doing it right now. He's working on things outside of time. You do not see them, but he is working things for your good. He is working things right now. He wants you to seek him, to come to him, to pray to him, to give your burdens to him, to receive his peace. He wants you to be that shining light on a hill. How are you going to do that? But by the word of your testimony, we were called to be the city on a hill, the light, the light, the light to shine into the darkness. That is our calling. That is what we are supposed to do. Are we so caught up in our own day-to-day -day things that we're forgetting our bigger calling that God wants to use us to be the light of the world in this crazy, crazy dark time? Wow. Yes, Diana, you should. Yes, ladies, we have a 14-day identity in Christ challenge as well. So if you want to be part of that, there's a 14-day um, Identity in Christ Facebook group, and then you can get more information. Oh, man, because that's a powerful one. But yes, yes, ladies, speak that out. You are an overcomer. Speak it out even if you don't feel it right now. That is your identity given to you by the Lord. You didn't earn it. You didn't do anything for it. It's not works-based. You are an overcomer simply because Jesus is the overcomer. That is why. So claim your victory in Christ. You are an overcomer by the blood of the lamb, what he shed his life for you to take us away from this world to have eternity with him in, in just full victory over the enemy. Wow. To live with him for eternity in a heaven where there is no tears, where there is no night, where God himself gives light for the day and, there, and it is unending. <laughs> 
There is no night. It's a beautiful thing. If you don't know what heaven is going to be like, read the book of Revelation and begin to get a glimpse of what is awaiting us in eternity. It is so much more than this earth right now. Wow, beautiful. Beautiful things await us, guys. But you are an overcomer. Live in that victory today. Treat others from that victory today. Treat others, see their pain, have compassion and love for them as Jesus would. And don't react out of your emotions. Receive peace from Christ. Receive peace and then act in love towards your brothers and sisters who are hurting. Love you, ladies. Thank you so much for being here with me this morning. I will see you again on day three tomorrow, I mean Friday. And then again, if you don't have your own Devo to start going deeper with the Lord and processing these questions and writing them out and journaling them out, get it for yourself. Ladies have already posted the link for us. All right, have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys later. And it's Wednesday, so happy Water Wednesday to you as well. Bye, guys.